Hey YouTube, I want to show you how to make some yogurt today. Um, this is a fairly easy recipe. Uh, I have been working on this for about a month or ish. And um, to get the recipe like I wanted it to be. So I'm gonna share with you um, the way that I found works good for our family. I have watched several different things and tried a few different things. And I finally gotten it the way uh, that I want it and it's a fairly easy technique. Okay, so I need to measure out two quarts, which is a half of a gallon of milk. Well, this is our raw Jersey milk from Elsa. turn the oven on medium and I am going to stir this the entire time that it's on because I don't want the milk on the bottom to get hot enough where it burns. So our milk is going to just continue to heat up and one thing that I want to do is check the temperature. Right now my milk is about 55 degrees and I want this milk to get to 120 degrees. So I'm going to continue to stir and check the temperature until we reach 120 degrees. Okay, so as you can see, our milk is up to 120. So I have turned this eye off. We're gonna slide our milk off. And now I need to inoculate this milk. So this is yogurt that I started with a culture, an organic yogurt from the store. And what we're wanting to do is take those cultures and put them in here. So I had a store-bought organic it has been passed through several yogurts as I was trying to get it like I wanted. And we like our yogurt thick. Now, some of the first ones I made were so runny that like soup consistency, and that's not what we were shooting for. So I worked with it until I got it what I wanted. Now we're gonna inoculate this yogurt you want about a fourth of a cup, which is about what I'm putting in there. About a fourth of a cup. And now I want to get this mixed in with my milk very well.
of a mess pouring this up. This is usually about halfway, but I spilled some all over the stove. Um, so I'm going to now cover these up and place them in my oven. Hey viewers. And now that I have these in my oven, I wanna wrap them with a towel. So now I'm gonna cover these up and I'm gonna leave my oven light on and I'm gonna let these sit for probably about 12 hours and then I'm gonna pull them out and then we'll start the next process. How long you let your yogurt sit really is a personal preference. Um, the longer you let it sit, really the stronger it's gonna be. So if you like a more um, strong flavor, the longer you're gonna let it sit. Um, if you don't want as much of a strong flavor in your yogurt, then you would maybe look at like maybe six or eight hours. I'm gonna let mine go for 12. Um, we like ours a little bit stronger and a little bit thicker. And you'll see in the next process that we're gonna go to, um, even the straining is a personal preference. So if you're straining your yogurt and you see that you have gotten it to a consistency that you like, then you go ahead and take it up. Now, like I said, for us, we like ours thick. So I let mine sit for about another 12 hours. Um, but if you like yours a little bit more loose, then you would take it up maybe closer to that six or eight. Um, just whenever you find that you have a good consistency with your yogurt. Okay, y'all, my yogurt is ready. So I'm fixing to um, get it out and we're gonna start with the next process. And please excuse me, my voice, because I'm battling a cold that I cannot seem to get rid of. So now what I want to do is take this yogurt and it has a almost soup-like consistency and I want my yogurt to be a little bit thicker while well, I say that and it's really actually coming out way thicker than it was even before the times that I've made it before. but we're gonna strain it and try to get some of this liquid tight off. Oh yeah, that's actually a really awesome consistency already. And that's really just a great consistency already. But I am going to go ahead and strain it and just get some of this extra liquid off. So I have a strainer on top of a pot and see the liquid coming off. So I'm just going to let that liquid from the strainer and the cheese call come through into this pot. <clears throat> and um, I'm gonna and like I said yesterday this really just depends on what type consistency you're looking for and since I can tell that the consistency of my yogurt is already pretty much where I want it and that's a really awesome consistency already I'm going to probably let this stay for just a very few hours and then I'm gonna pull this up. I mean, that's just, an, that's per, almost perfect. And um, 
then we'll put it back into our jars and in the fridge. Now, I, we love to flavor ours with vanilla and honey, and it makes an absolutely amazing yogurt. Okay, so it's been about two hours, and I have my yogurt, the consistency that I want it. And I'm doing this one-handed, so y'all just bear with me. And let me show you that consistency. Well, that's just what I want right there. So I'm going to go ahead and take this up and put it in my jars, which I cannot do one-handed. So I'm gonna turn this thing off and get this in my jars. But first, let me show you what I strained off. So I strained this off, this way off of my yogurt, and now I have it exactly the consistency that I want it. So I started off with three quart jars and ended with this full jar of yogurt and a touch in this one. And this jar has nothing in it. And this is the way that is left over that I'm going to give to our baby pigs and they love it. Okay, so I just wanted to give you a quick rundown on my thoughts on the homemade yogurt. Um, now that I'm done with the process and Really, I just want to say I've watched um, several different YouTube videos on different processes from uh, Instapot to putting in the oven, um, which is the method that I used. Um, I've heard lots of different temperatures. I've heard um, lots of different um, hours that you need to keep your yogurt in the oven, lots of different hours you need to strain. So what the conclusion that I really come to in my experience was um, it's really trial and error for you. Um, I use the same method several times and the consistency of my yogurt turned out different. Um, same temperature, same everything. Um, so that gave me different straining times. So what I really learned is the longer you, the stronger you want your yogurt to taste, the longer you need to let it sit. The thicker you want your yogurt to be, the longer you need to let it strain. So really, it's a personal preference for you. Um, I have played with it. I have um, done different as far as hours, I've done different times. Um, the process has been the same though, um, and it wor has worked really well. Um, I enjoy doing it, I enjoy learning this process, but I will say that it was a experimental thing for me. I learned a lot of different things from a lot of different people, but ultimately I did what, was, what I liked the best. Um, a little bit stronger taste and a little bit thicker was what I like and what our family likes. So that's what I did. Um, but if you like yours more loose or maybe not as strong of a uh, taste, then you can work with that. And um, so it's not hard at all. It's very, very easy to do. But it's really just getting in the kitchen and playing with it and experimenting with it and finding out what... Um, you like best. So I don't think there's really a wrong way. Like I said, I have seen people say Instapot's the only way to go, but then I've seen people do it lots of different other ways. I didn't have an Instapot, so I wanted to try to play with it and see. Um, so that's what I did. And um, mine turn has turned out great. Like I said, you'll have to play with it on your, how strong you want it and the times that you want it to strain as far as the consistency that you want it. There's not a definite on that. Um, it's just your personal preference. So um, I hope you guys have learned something. I hope you enjoyed this video and happy homesteading y'all.